Hello and welcome to this Mastering FIFA 16 video. Now, um, slight apology. Um, oh no, that's cool. So, uh, not apology, um, we're all on time and everything's ready to go. So we're playing against Watford in the fifth round of the FA Cup. I'm a bit confused. Um, I made a slight cock up earlier and managed to delete um, a game. So I think we're still in the fifth round. Should be completely made a mistake and um, I'll just let this flick through so it says yep five fifth out cool lovely that's fine so uh, playing um, shouldn't be too difficult a game against Watford compared to what we, we've already been up to so hopefully give me a chance to, to win so Mr. Big Boys so Oh, mate. Oh, that was close as hell. Defender did well, but if I wasn't that defender, that would have been a goal. That's it. I think the um, I definitely like the graphics when it comes to pulling the shirt. I think that's a nice little, uh, a very nice touch, and it always looks pretty good. Hey, it's time for the magic spray. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, oh, we stopped at eight. Right, ten, and there's our lines. It was a really interesting. When it came out, it was such an interesting little idea. It makes complete sense, absolutely. You can't, you can't, ah, bugger. I pair one, two, it didn't quite work. Uh, it made complete sense, and it was a, it's a great way of keeping them going, but it's, it's one of those silly things where you think, why no one thought of that before? It's such a simple, simple thing. But, obviously... How was that not a foul? But the one I did was through ball, lovely. Oh, oh. Do you know it's that far out? I'm not. Oh, come on. That was awful. That was just bad play by me. I should have really gotten that a bit better. Bit of a shoulder play there. Nice ball in. Oh, almost. Back in a bit of swinging form. You might notice me bouncing around. I'm, I'm, I play. I'm playing on a Swiss ball again. Um, I always used to. Use a Swiss ball to play every game actually. When I was playing on the um, when I was playing on the on the PlayStation Three, because I did in the living room. Um, but I find I do find the Swiss ball quite a comfortable thing to sit on. So that's why I'm here. So I can bounce, basically, which is quite a lot of fun. Can't deny that. I also used to do a thing during, um, so for instance, if I conceded a goal, um, for every, every goal I conceded, I like to do 10 subs, which used to be cruel. Uh, I used to do the same thing as well with Call of Duty, which was every time I, I death would equal 10 sit-ups when you're dying 10 times. Uh, so then in the in the interval, uh, in between games in the, load, in, in, the, in the lobby, I used to have to do uh, the sit-ups as a punishment for every time I used to die. Um, the killer was always a long run game on Battlefield because sometimes you can die 20 times on Battlefield. Yes, great finish. Uh, so yeah, sometimes you can finish, uh, die 20 times on Battlefield on a, on a huge rush or something. And 200 subs used to kill me. But it, it, 
I was a lot skinnier back then, strangely, and a bit fitter. So saying that, I, I, I might try and implicate, in, implement, implicate, implement again, just to see if I can lose a bit, of, bit of my gut. So uh, maybe I should do those you know, bloody enforced um, uh, cutscenes from this game, which I hate. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. I'm passionate. I wish you could just get rid of them, turn them off. But yeah. Very good. Intercepting play there to get his position on. It could be a chance. Oh bugger. Good attempt, but not quite there. Pink boots. Come on, mate. Pink boots. I can talk, I, um, when I played rugby I had red boots, so my, my kit used to be green and white shirt and then a white shorts and red socks and I had red boots on, I was the only person, so I was also a hooker and wearing red boots and red red socks was a bit ridiculous um, and when I got I got caught cheating once or twice by treading on, treading on someone's hand who was on the wrong side, referee said to me, I know it's you because you're the only person with red boots, which was a bit of a... Yeah, I, th I can't argue with that statement. But still, um, I think nowadays, I, think, I don't think any boot is any colours out of, you know, for, especially for football, I don't think any colour boots out. I think I saw a pair of pink mercurials the other week and I thought if I was playing rugby, I'd buy those because I love, I love saying they're a bit different. So, but still. So I shouldn't really complain about the left back wearing a pair of pink boots. But still. What the hell are they doing? Okay, they can have some good um, thingy stats, I think. Good possession. But they don't do anything with it. So you got the final third that came back to me. What's the point? So it was my ball uh, play a bit quicker. Oh, ha, ha, what a goal! <laughs> Near post header, that was ridiculous. There's no way that, got, that should have gone in. Okay, that was a good header in the end. And straight with half time. I will, I will I tip my own hat because I'm being facetious and annoying. Fine, it's a nice little play. Alan Smith said he thought that we would lose this. Meh. Shows what you know, Alan Smith. Meh. Another lines more. Oh, you know, a whistle past the post. Just have it at keep ball. And it's just bit be a certain point when you pass in if don't I can't remember when you pass it was, but 
you got to a certain level and then they would start, the crowd would start saying LA. Ah, crap. So I don't do that because eventually I'll get carried away. Off. I knew he was going to be offside. Why did I pass to him? I said it for a pass. Idiot. Uh. Yes. Rubbish goal, really, but, you know. Couldn't do anything else about it. Slide tackle. Ooh. Could have gone down there. Three nil. Mm. Nah, I was trying to be clever there. It's a diagonal ball to switch the play here. No running, just book. You can let them just play at the back. Not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. Going back to um, actually to the first first game in the third what the third round game against Man City, uh, it went really a little thing from um, Paul Scholes today. Well, it was I think he was it was a commentary that he did on BT Sport, and he said the only uh, players in the Premier the only player in the Premiership he thinks he could get in the Real Madrid or Barcelona squad is Sergio Aguero, and I was looking at that thinking, I wonder how true that actually is. I mean, Aguero is a great player, um, obviously. Um, but there were a few players I was thinking you know, could who else could break into that team obviously you've got two issues there you've got you've got to put them up against the incumbent players you know you're not going to find anyone who's really good out, out um, who's going to replace Messi or, or Ronaldo or players like that because they're just far too good in their positions but just trying to think there's got to be other players who you know um, who's the defender for Pe Pepe is it Pepe for Real Madrid? You know, you're thinking it's got to be a better defender than him in the Premiership. But actually, difficult to think if there actually is. Um, and it's one of those annoying sort of things where, again, Skulls is actually a very always has always been was a very clever footballer, and it's something about him which just makes him a good ah he's offside. I knew that idiot. Um, yeah, and, and, and he's very good. I find him a very good pundit. He's on BT Sport these days. Um, but it was just quite an interesting quote. So I wonder, you know, it's always a difficult one because, you know, so many times, you know, Barcelona and Real Madrid have raided England. You know, you think about um, so many, well, if you were, obviously Gareth Bale going to, um, what's it, Gareth Bale going there uh, to Real Madrid. Uh, Luka Modric, who was a weird one. Um, and Alex Song going to, obviously he's back now in England, but he did go to Barcelona for a while. So if you think about all those players, Alexander Kleb, and all those um, who, you know, have gone there, haven't really made it, and then disappeared off somewhere else. Some of them have made it. So it would be interesting to see, you know, obviously we're not talking about English players here, we're talking about players in the Premier League, which is different. So I'm just trying to think, I mean, I don't think, I'm trying to think of any English players who can make it over there, and I can't think of any, truthfully. Oh, that was unlucky. I don't know if England have any world-class players at the moment. Uh, I think Rooney was. I don't think he is anymore. But I don't think they've got any world, you know, 
in a world in a world eleven, I don't think you're going to get any English players in it. Truthfully, um, maybe some based in the Premiership, but there's definitely none uh, with English nationality. I don't think. I do find those sort of things quite interesting, you know, especially when it comes from former players who who watch games and you're thinking part of it is it sour grapes or rest of it. I'm never too sure about that, but there is always that sort of um you know how do you class how's a why is a player world class? Is it because they perform on every stage? You know, there'll be George Best I think as I always said was, was one of the most amazing footballers in the world, but because he played for not Northern Ireland he was never didn't really have the chance to play on the world stage, so you know that's an issue. But that's something that we'll go through another time, I'm sure. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. A um, bit of a ramble at the end, just because it was quite a nice, easy 3 0 win. Uh, to the quarterfinals we go. So um, hopefully, we'll see you next time. Please do take care and um, good night.